Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman, Wargamer. It's part four of my playthrough of Point Blank. V is for Victory, a game published by Lock and Load Publishing and designed by Sean Drulinger. In the last video, we saw the uh, Ox and Bucks get a bit of a tanning by the Germans. Sergeant Angrave and one of the squads have been shaken. So now we've got to deal with that. And of course, there were a few misplays which you were kind enough to put me right on. And they consisted of me forgetting to discard cards when I was doing leader actions, for instance. And I think I missed the chance of a hero creation when I drew a one for a defensive role. And the other thing was, comment was made about fatigue, that when a leader removes fatigue from a unit, there's a chance you can remove it from another unit. But it looks like you can only do that if you actually play a card with the ready symbol on it. But again, you'll let me know if that isn't correct. I'll play it like that until I'm told otherwise. So apologies for the misplays. I'm not going to try and work backwards and do it because, as I said at the beginning, this isn't a faultless playthrough of the game with everything correct. It's me, old rough, playing the game, having fun and interacting with the viewers. So there we go. So what are we going to do? I think the main thing we've got to do is try and get these unshaken first. Problem is, Sergeant Hangrave is himself shaken, so he's the first one we've got to look at. But before we can do anything, it's time to look at the upkeep phase. So there aren't any melee or overrun attacks. No train is being placed. Ready all spent leaders is about the only one that's going to happen, so we can ready Lieutenant Hughes. I think that's it. And now we're into the British impulse phase. So let's have a quick look at the cards. So here's our hand of cards. We've got a couple of assault cards, which uh, will allow us to move and then fire if we wish. We've got a move and a fire, but this is the one we're interested in. This is the rally card. That's the one we're going to use. So oh, here we are. So this will allow us to attempt to remove the shaken marker from Sergeant Angrave, and then we can use his leader ability to try and remove this shaken marker, and then he can use his leadership ability to make that, uh, that role a bit easier, because they can't apply their modifier while they're shaken. So now Sergeant Angrave has got to perform a morale check, a 2d6 morale check. His morale, you can see, is 6. Now, because he's in blocking terrain, he's in this uh, wood building, and it's a blocking terrain, he can subtract 2 from the die roll because he's got to throw equal to or less than that 6. So as they're in that blocking terrain, they can huddle up against the wall, feel a bit safer, gather their thoughts and see if they can rally. So here we go, 2d6, morale check for Sergeant Angrave. We get a three. Oh, and another three. That's six minus the two for the building. That's four, so it's under the six. He is unshaken. And we can get rid of those. Unfortunately, that's our action. We can only do one of those, as you know, but we'll do a leader action on Sergeant Angrave and possibly down here with Lieutenant Hughes to get rid of a fatigue. But let's try and get this squad unshaken. Again, morale is six. They're in that building, so that's minus two, minus another one for Sergeant Angrave's recovered leadership ability. So that's a minus three. Here we go. Four. Oh, nine. Minus the three, though, is six. We just do it. 
he should have been spent. And of course, the thing I keep forgetting to do is to discard a card. So I think we'll discard one of the assault cards. Remembered this time. So they're all back and tickety boo, ready for next turn. But that's it. I don't think there's anything else we can do apart from draw up to your hand size. So we've got three left. What are we going to get? That's a fatigue remover, a ready action card. Ah, that, that is a cover card. We can play that during the enemy fire attack if they do one to try and get some cover. So that's our five cards. Oh, nearly forgot, going to use Lieutenant Hughes's uh, ability to remove one of these fatigues. But of course, we have to discard a card. I'll use one of the cards we had in the hand before we drew up. That was the assault. So we'll draw another one to make up for that. And it is another cover card. I think that's it. It is now the Germans' turn. So for the Germans, first thing they have to do is the upkeep phase. I don't think there's much going on here. No terrain placement, no readying of spent leaders. So we're on to the impulse phase. Pop that there. See what they get. That's a six, a five, and a one. And on the chart here, that's a fire. First thing I've got to do, I always forget, is to discard a card. So we'll do that. These are spent from last time. So before we do anything, we'll do the leader action and ready these. That does mean Leutnant Andish is spent. And the group that's going to fire, I think, will be this group. They're just as near as those. But because Leutnant Andish is spent, he can't add his leadership bonus to the attack. And besides, what do we got here? We got Leutnant Werner, MG42 for the second line squad. And we've got the 7.92 millimeter machine gun, which we're going to use as well. So let's just check through this. So fire action, select AEO, maybe those. Are they available to fire? Yes. Are there multiple AEO units in the sector? So form fire group with infantry. There's only one squad, so I'd say no. Does AEO have ordnance or radio? Support weapons? No. Conduct firepower attack against closest infantry before unbuttoned armoured fighting vehicle. So we're just going to fire first with the second line squad and their MG42. And then we're going to fire with the machine gun. Now the only decision really is who do we give Werner's leadership modifier to? Before we do anything, both of those are going to get a fatigue marker. There we are. And they'll be firing on Lieutenant Hughes's group in the wood building. So let's just zoom in a bit. So we just have to decide whether or not Lieutenant Werner's 
leadership modifier is going on the infantry or the weapons team here. So let's have a quick sort of count up. We've got four firepower there and four firepower there. So it doesn't make much difference. So let's use it on second line squad there. So the squad and the machine gun, as I said earlier, has a firepower of four plus Werner's leadership modifier. That gives us a five. No other modifiers apply. So they do an attack with 1d6 and they get a four. Plus the five is nine. Now, Lieutenant Hughes's group has to do a defensive D6 check, and we're adding the defensive modifier of the building. But let me just check. We've got a couple of cover cards, if you remember. Hold on. <laughs> a mistake here. We can't play this. We have to do it before they resolve their fire attack. So they're too late jumping down for cover. That's a nine then. I think that's right because in the rules it says, when played, the cover action must be played prior to any resolution of an opponent's fire attack. So silly me, Lieutenant Hughes's group didn't get their heads down quick enough. So nine firepower. So we've got three to add to ours. So we need a nice high number. So it looks like we need a six. No, dear, oh dear, oh dear. So we end up with a defense of four. They have an attack of nine. Nine minus four is five. So now these units here have to do a morale check, adding five to the dice value they're going to pull. So let's see. We'll do Lieutenant Hughes first. He's got a morale, though, of seven. But remember, we're going to add five onto it. So I mustn't get confused. This isn't a morale check. We're doing a, a damage check, which is 1d6. But we are comparing it to the morale. And Lieutenant Hughes's morale is seven. But we've got to add five onto it. Here we go. Oh. Two plus five is seven. The lieutenant is okay. Next, it's the two para squads, and I think they're, yeah, six. They've got a morale of six. So adding five onto this for this unit here. Oh, that's 10. They are shaken. We know this one, don't we? And then this uh, unit here. Three plus five is eight. Again, shaken. Not a good turn once again for the Brits. So we'll pop that. I don't think he was spent, was he? I'll check in a minute. So that's bad luck for the Ox and Bucks, but we've still got the weapons team here to have a go. So once again, we're going to add on. Let's just see if we can move that there. That's better. Pop that there for a sec. We've got a firepower of four. We can't use the leader's modifier. We've already used it. So firepower of four. Nothing else applies. Oh, three. So seven total. Once again, we can add our defensive modifier of three. One plus the three. It's only four. They've only gone and hit us again. And seven minus four is three. 
we've got to do another check and this time add three onto it. It's not looking good. Move those back. So once again, let's uh, see if Lieutenant Hughes survives. He's got a morale of seven. So it's a D6 plus three. Four plus three is seven. Only just does it. This squad here, six again for their morale. Two plus three is five. They've done it. They don't get uh, reduced, which is the next thing I believe would, that would happen. And lastly, this uh, unit here, come on. Four plus three is seven. No, they failed. And it is now reduced to a half squad. Let's pop those on there. See, the only thing is it's a little bit finicky sometimes. So we'll get a reduced unit. And here is the half squad. Dear, oh dear. They remain shaken. And hopefully that's all they can do. Leutnant Werner can't use any of his um, special skills. We can't remove this fatigue because it was only just placed there. So a, a devastating impulse phase for the Brits. And now we're into the turn N phase, which doesn't apply because we've still got to get through the action deck. We're nearly there, but that's it. Let's take these away. We're ready for the Brits again. Just before we start the British turn, yes, of course, Lieutenant Hughes was spent and I forgot to discard a card for letting him do that action. I think we'll discard one of those. And now we're ready for the British upkeep phase. I think the only thing that's going to happen again is just to ready the spent leaders. So we'll do that. Let's move that piat over there. And Sergeant Angrave. There we go. What are we going to do? Well, we could fire with uh, these. These can't fire because they're shaken. We could try and remove the fatigue from those units. We could try and rally these ones to try and remove at least one of these shaken markers. Or we could start moving up. There's this lot here we haven't uh, touched, as well as these. Maybe move these up, start bringing them into the, uh, into the fray. To be honest, it's not looking good for the Brits. I think what we might do is make this the last phase of the game. I think um, the Brits are having a pretty bad time of it. But let's continue with the impulse phase for the Brits. We haven't got a rally card. We do have... The ready card, which we could use to try and get rid of some of that fatigue. And again, I think I forgot to do it last time. I think if we play the card, and removing one, we can try and remove another fatigue, either this one or the other one of those. So I think we'll do that. No, I'll tell you what we'll do. I think we will I think we'll try and move these up into here take a chance it's a bit of a, a case of do or die being in the wood building is fine but we're not uh, achieving the objective which is to take the bridge so we're going to play a move 
We're going to move these forward. That does mean their fatigue goes up to two. I think I did the uh, smoke wrong. We can place smoke if we are moving, but it's done as the move occurs. Just deciding what to do. I think the only other thing to do now is use the leadership abilities. So we're going to spend Lieutenant Hughes. I'm going to try and remove one of these shaken markers. We do a 2d6 check on their morale. So here we go. We get a 1. And a five, six, which is equal to, whoops, which is equal to their morale. So we'll take it off the full squad. And for Sergeant Angrave, we will remove one of the fatigues from last time. So we can make that back to a one because we're removing the fatigue from the last phases. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't think we can try and remove this one. I think it has to be played with a card. So that is it. That's the Brits, not much going on. It is now the Germans' turn. So their upkeep phase. So once again, using the sheet, I don't think there's going to be much going on except to ready spent leaders. So that's Leunt and Andish there. And now we're ready to see what, uh, what they're going to do. And we'll pop that. I'll tell you what, pop it here. They get a seven, four, and three, and uh, they're going to move, which I don't think they're going to do, probably fire, and recon. So here we are, defensive move. Oh, let me discard a card first. So, move action. Select AEO sector with least fatigue. Well, it's going to be these. AEO in sector in wire, mines negative or no DM? No. Are there any shaken units? AEO units in the sector? No. AEO within range of player unit firepower greater than AEO. Defensive modifier. No, I don't think it is. They've got a defensive modifier of two. Let's move that up. There we are, defensive modifier of two. I'd say no, it doesn't matter. I think we're, we're going to get the same end result. Yes, actually, firepower of the player unit is greater than two. And so, yes. Is the AEO adjacent to the victory objective? Uh, well, not that it makes a lot of difference. That's the victory objective, the bridge. So if we come down here, we'd go along here and back up here or along there. So we're going to do unit spend or discard action. And I think that's going to end up as a fire, if I remember rightly. So unit spend or discard action referred from another flowchart. Yes. Spend selected AEO from previous chart. It's going to be this one. AEO shaken. No. AEO has the assault icon. I don't think they do, do they? No. AEO in wire, mines negative, or zero DM, no. Player unit in line of sight and range, yes. AEO firepower, 
greater than player unit defensive modifier. They've got a defensive modifier of three. We've got a firepower of four with the machine gun. So yes. Yep. Fire a closest player unit with firepower before ordnance. So they're going to fire. Once again, they get fatigued. We're going to have a firepower of uh, four with the machine gun plus Leutnant Andish's uh, modifier. So that's a firepower of five. But before we do that, because I'll forget, we'll use Leutnant Werner's leadership to remove one of these. Or his action, leadership action. And now we're going to see if the Germans cause more mayhem for the Brits in the wood building. Now, once again, I've just forgot, just reminded me because the cards are here. I forgot to draw up, so we're going to take two cards. Those are two unit action cards. But as I say, I think this will be the last time through. But let's see what damage the Germans can do to the poor oxen bucks. So just to recap, we've got a firepower of five with Leutnant Andish's leadership ability. We now add a D6 to that. And we get a two. So that gives a total of seven. The Germans don't have any other modifiers. And now the Brits make a D6 check. And we're going to add three onto it because of the wood building. One. <laughs> Dear, so that's four. As I say, the Brits aren't having much luck. That's a difference of three. Now the Brits have to do yet another damage check, a D6 damage check, adding on that three difference. And their morale is six. We've got to get under that. So let's do the leader first. Four plus three is seven. No. Sergeant Angrave is shaken. This unit here, again, morale of six. One plus three is four. They're fine. And this unit here, six, no, plus the three is nine, of course, they're shaken. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's probably best that we're ending the game and the Brits can make an honorable retreat. But that's it. That's the end of that phase. Just before we conclude, yes, once again, I forgot to discard cards for Leutnant Werner and I think for the British commander, so we would have discarded some more cards. And that would have left us with less cards for the British the next time. But there we go. But this has been part four of a playthrough of. Point blank, V is for Victory, designed by Sean Drillinger and published by Lock and Load Publishing. Well, I'm sorry we've had to end the series, but A, I think I've done enough of a playthrough to give you an idea of how this great game works. It is really a good game. And uh, I've been pointing out what sort of mistakes could be made. But B, I think because of the reduced squad here and these keep getting hit they're shaken again i think it's going to be quite impossible for the brits to uh, get to the bridge but there we go regardless of that i hope you've enjoyed it if you have and you haven't done so already it would be great if you would have a think about subscribing to the channel it really does help pushing the like button the thumbs up underneath this video helps tremendously as well 
And don't forget, if you want to be informed of other content channel uploads, then push the bell and make sure you push all notifications as well. Leave a comment. I made a few boo-boos last time. I dare say there's a few more this time, but let me know just so it'll help out myself and other players of this really quite different game. Thanks as always to my subscribers. Thank you so much. And just before I go, if you wish to support the channel a little bit further, well, you can, of course, you can buy the channel a coffee, and I'll leave a link in the description for that. Or you can push the super thanks button underneath the video. This all goes towards helping the channel to continue ticking along. So thank you. Right then, that's the end of point blank. V is for victory. We'll clear this away and get something else out on the table. What it will be? Well, you'll have to find out in the next video. But until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.